Oh
Hallelujah. 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 Apa ni hafid ni? Hello. Today is day three. I call it Resurrection Sunday. We came here on Friday and uh, we put some seeds in the ground. We are harvesting today. So I call day three at the ceremony Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Amen. We are going to continue immediately with testimony time. We have just about 30 minutes to start service. So wherever we get to, we'll break and start service. We may continue. Amen. Amen. Let's welcome Marilyn Osain Udro. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And our God is always faithful. He never puts his children to shame. When you trust and you believe in him, and you walk in his ways, he always smiles at you. I have a little testimony. It's great to me. Apparently, in the office, I work in the bank. When someone comes to open an account, um, you have the requirements and everything that you have to give to the person. There was this customer who walked in. That was the beginning of last year. He said he wanted to open an account. I gave him every details and everything. Normally, he needs to do an address confirmation. Address confirmation means that, that means that you have to get someone who has a Barclays account. So he was like, I should do it for him. And I was like, no, I don't know you. At least you should know the person for at least a year before you do it for the person. I can tell you in confidence that sometimes, because of sales, we do it for some customers. But this particular customer, it kept coming to me like I didn't want to do it. He went and came back about three times insisting that he wanted me to do it for him. And I also insisted that I can't do it for him because I don't know him. So he went, after the third time when he came, he went out, 30 minutes later when he was coming, he saw um, a friend of his who has an account with us. So he came with him to do the address confirmation. And then I opened the account. He was opening a daughter account. So he paid him thousand. But he had checks worth three hundred and eighty. He wanted to pay into the account, but they were foreign checks, so I need to work on them and take it to our head office, and they will process it. And those ones, they take a little while because they have to confirm from um, the foreign bankers and stuff. So I did everything. Normally, if you do it in the banking center, someone will sign with you. So I took it to my patients and left it with him to do the process. I came on leave, um, that was last year, January. I was just there then, I was called that, a customer called that, his checks. And I was like, we sent it to our department in head office. So I myself took it upon myself and I called the head office. When I called, they traced and looked and looked for the check. They couldn't find it. So the lady, one lady was there, she was very helpful. She gave me a week that she gave her some time, she would look for the check. I was calling her because the amount involved is a lot. I was calling her every morning, every afternoon to be sure whether she sent the check. They never traced anything. That means that the check didn't go there. So we, we said they let us look for it in our branch. We looked everywhere. Coincidentally, I saw the leaflets. You know, uh, some of the checks, um, it comes with a detached that you give to the customer to show that he has given you a 
the gym. I rather saw that one, but they checked itself. I couldn't find it. I said, mm. I came home. When I slept, I dreamt that I had left the bank and then they, they, they came to me and they were chasing me. That's those checks. I said, hey, Jesus. So I just prayed about it. And then I asked God that wherever these checks are, He should let me find it. I'm telling you confident that it took a year. That was still looking for the check. The whole of last year, I wasn't to myself. We searched and searched for the check. We couldn't find it. Then, beginning of this year, it came out that the customer that I opened the account for went to two branches to open an account as well. But with different identity. So it's like, it's your face, but the same name. Then you went to open an account in two branches of ours. With various checks that like, he brought to me. And those checks went through. Do you know that when the checks went through, I found my checks. But that time, the fraudulent aspect has been covered already. I don't know whether you get what I'm saying. They, they opened the account for him. Their checks cleared, but the checks were fraudulent. So God made my checks to get missing for a reason. <laughs> At the time that we saw the checks and we took them, that was when the other fraudulent things have been discovered. I wouldn't have known where I would have been today. It was three hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. Fill my cup, Lord.
to God for what he has done for me. I had this particular problem with a certain subjects. I've written exams or like for three years, but I didn't pass them. So I decided to come to get seven. And God being faithful, when I came and I prayed to God that I need to pass this particular examination, God being faithful, I passed. So I want to say thank you, God. Thank you for letting me pass.
Selene, I made some prayer requests and it happened that it came through but the finances was a challenge. But God made way where there was no way. And then I was not feeling well when I was coming on Friday. So I, I was thinking, should I rather stay at home or I was thinking that God told me to come. And when I came, I, I realized that I needed to come. And several other blessings God has been doing in my life and the life of my family. I thank him so much. God is indeed good. I have sat on my grade for more than seven years. And I kept on praying, God, when will my promotion come? When will my promotion come? But then there was another voice also telling me, start learning. Start whatever you are doing, your field of work, start learning. So around January, February, in our outlook, it came that there, there are job opportunities now, but it's for, you have to write an exam, and based on your performance in the exams, you go for the interview, and based on your performance in the interview, you'll be granted the position. Oh God, I've waited all this one, look at the procedure I would have to go through to be pushed a level further. So we all started, me and my friends and whatever. But at the end of the day, there will be an in the yamen. Then we went to write the exams. Only me, when it got when it got to submitting of what I have done, the network went off. Then I started shivering in my chair. Said, God, what is this? Because the thing, everything is online. And then as soon as you submit, your results come. And only me. God, what is the meaning of this? So they came to me and they said, I have to start all over. They are giving me 30 minutes. As I was doing the thing, I was praying. I was praying. And then I sent it. I did it within 15 minutes because I had already done it. Then the results came. We went back and they said, all those who had about 73% are qualified for the interview. So letters came, and I had 76. So I went for the interview. In fact, when I went, the interview asked for well, one of her DDGs, she is coming from the US. So you can imagine that. <laughs> so I was telling God, Father, teach me what to say. Because I don't, I don't draw, I, I speak normal. So when I got there, they started asking me the question, you know the panel, drawing it left, right. Then I started answering. I didn't know where the confidence came. They talk, I talk. They talk, I talk. They talk, I talk. Then I, I saw her nodding her head. Co, 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 then she's writing. They talk, I talk. They said, young lady, thank you so much. You hear from me. But the, where I went, we had branches all over Ghana. So my next prayer was, God, should I gain, should I get this promotion? And they said, Gambaga is the only place. What will I do? I'm not ready to leave the little ones I have. So another prayer topic also started. Father, help me, help me. Then in April, May, June, people started receiving their letters. Hey, if I, I've got in Adabraka, I'm going to head Adabraka. Hey, you have got in here. Hey, a first letter has not come. That means you didn't do well in the interview. I kept praying. I said, God, God help me. God help me. God help me. I was there one Monday morning. I, I was about starting work. I saw the secretary coming with smiles. Before your letter has come, I opened it. And it was touching on why. So go on, help him. Say, Father, may your name be glorified. And people were like, you, you know somebody. You, you how come you had a prayer? Because some are going to a passing goal. I said, no, I know the God I said. So we came. 
paper because the dollar rate and what they were mentioning, we better stay in our two bedroom house. Then I was home when my mommy called. She said that she'd come over. So I went to her. We had a long chat. And then she said, you know what? I'm relocating. I don't want to stay in Accra again. I said, mommy, why? She said, no, I can't leave my girl. I said, I can't leave my My mommy had built a five bedroom house. She said, the one is for you and your family. <laughs> Then something just said, 
asked him for a, pre a pregnancy test. And then I said, can I have a pregnancy test? He said, yes. I went to do it. When I came, he said, you are two weeks pregnant. Yeah. When did you get married? And I was like, oh, I got married within that month. Then he said, okay, then honeymoon baby. So we just laughed off. So I was so happy. God has been faithful. Man. And then I was like, oh, so joy to the world. Let me be glad. Then he said I should see a guy. So I went to see the guy. And he said I should go and do an ultrasound. When I did the ultrasound, the man just did the thing and said, yes, there's an embryo, but there are fibroids. It's either the baby survives or the fibroid. So then I got scared. I was like, oh, so God makes everything perfect. So why is it that this has to happen? So when I went to see the doctor, the doctor said, yes, it's true. Sometimes, well, with where my uh, fibroids are, it's even surprising I got married. Because for this, excuse me to say, the strength to pass it's amazing. And also because I have had an um, operation already, I can't give birth normal. They will have to um, cut me when I'm coming to give birth. And then he was explaining to me that there's something called um, womb, I've forgotten the name, rapture of the womb. So if they don't uh, cut me, it would mean my womb can rapture and then either everything must be taken off or if I bleed excessively, I'll die. So I said, okay, I'm not the first woman to be operated on, so it doesn't matter. So they, then I went on with it. Now, as, as I go to the hospital, he looks at the series of ultrasound and say, I can see the fibroids. I'm like, well, you are saying I have fibroids, but to me, I don't have. So um, as time went on, I, to cut a long story short, the time came, you get me to the second February, so in the second February, for the operation. He says we have to avoid normal bed. So you are doing much, but we'll have the operation in 20 sec on 22nd. So I went to the end to church on 19th. I came back home and I started feeling that pain I used to feel. So I was like, ah, how come this pain had come back? I didn't know I was in labor. And there was nobody in the house. The, I just, my water just broke. I had to call, they had to rush me all the way to Kolebu. When they took me to Kolebu, they said it's an emergency. So they were preparing me for the theater. They don't have to uh, allow me to give them. So when they were, they, they, they did everything at the ground floor and they were taking me to the fourth floor. So pushing me, I started screaming, the baby is coming. They said, no, 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 no. The baby, don't push, don't push. And you're not Kolebu nurses, they'll scream at you. Don't push, we're taking you to the theater. I was like, no, the baby is coming. The baby. So they pushed, we got to um, the elevator. You know, step by step, people had to alight. I was screaming, the baby is coming. She was saying, don't push. So they pushed me in the elevator, and we got to, I don't know if it's the theater or there are so many women, some crying, they, they were in labor. So they just pushed me in, and an orderly just raised the cloth and said, the baby's head is there. So the doctor just turned and said, push. I just said, boom, mm, and the baby came. No, 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 no,
What is good? Look, if you have God, if you have Jesus in your boat, the storms will come. They will come. But once there is Jesus, there will be silence, there will be peace. Amen. I was driving in a village community. The road was very bad, so I was going very slow. I passed in front of a house, and I heard a loud noise at the back door. Very loud noise. So I stopped, thinking that someone might have done something or to hit the car. So I wanted to check. The moment I opened the door, I saw people doing like this. We go be bow, we go be bow. Don't know when. When I passed in front of the house, there was about um, two or three years boy running out of the house, top speed. So he hit the back door, the car was moving, and he slided another car. But God being so good, he lied under the car, and the ties just passed side by side. Nothing happened to So, I was shocked because the moving car, a saloon car, moving car, I could. Someone just hit the car and slide under the middle. So I'll share this testimony with a, a, my best friend who just came from the US. It was like when he came, that week, it happened on a Friday, and he said that week, a pastor friend called him and he told him that he has a very close friend and um, he had planned him to be in trouble, in trouble. Because he saw that he had removed my throat. Okay. Then when I told him, he was like, wow, what is good? So when I prayed, and that Friday, what took me out? Okay. I say this to the glory of God. Because I don't understand. The car was in it. It was moving. So I say this to the glory of God. That if you have Jesus, you must see, you might not even see the trouble coming. It will come and it will take you out. Amen. the Holy Spirit, that the devil's evil workings will never be able to come against these good things that you have done in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I declare that this will be established in their lives. Whatever the devil attempts to do will not succeed. Sometimes he brings some challenges to create the impression that, oh, the Lord was not able to do it. It was just a camouflage. It was just for a short time. But this is permanent because the Lord has established it. It is forever settled in heaven. Father, I pray that you bless your children who have other testimonies to give. You have done many for us. We want to say thank you for your faithfulness. In your name continue to be glorified in the lives of your people. To strengthen our faith. To empower us to do great exploits. Father and Father, we say 
Reveal yourself unto your children. Let each one have a personal revelation of his life. And as we will take divine direction from you, we will walk in step with you. Under the auction of power of the Holy Spirit, we have prayed with mighty thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We begin this morning's service in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our God is good. He's a great God. And indeed, demons tremble at his presence. Amen. Amen. We're going to lift up worship unto the name of the living God. I want us to stand a humble request. We are adoring the name of our living God. He is the one who sits above the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants of the earth are like grasshoppers in his sight. Oh, when to me no, when just I
thank God. It's by His grace and His mercy that we are here today. And I pray that even after we leave this place, we'll continue to bless His name and worship Him wherever we find ourselves. Amen.
We never say that. I will walk in water from. matter, this purpose for which you and I 
have been called. All the spectres for which God laid his hands on us. Not playing down on the other times. Because the other times were also forceful in their own way. But the reason I, I want to highlight or bring that to the fore, it was broken down to the barest minimum, to the simplest form, that anybody who's just running through the, the, the competing can pick and run along with. And my admonition is that let us not let all of these things go waste. Let us hold on to these things. The Bible says that what we have is a sure word of prophecy. And the Bible says in 2 Peter that we will do well to pay attention to it. Like a light that is shining in a dark place. Unto the day dawns and the sun of righteousness rises with healing in his wings. That is what the word of God says. What has been placed into your hands is a sure word of prophecy. Now usually when we think about prophecy, we think about those that come during probably prayer meetings or maybe intercessions when the, the atmosphere is charged and people get uh, uh, glimpses and snippets of messages and they are given. That, that is what we see. Or when people see us, see into our lives and they speak into our life, we, we see those prophecies as the thing. The sure word of prophecy. What I'm saying here is that the sure word, that, 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 that word, that the Bible says that not an idol or a dot will be removed from, which is the infallible word of God. When that word is handed into your hands, you hold fast to it, like holding on to a light that is shining in a dark place. In a dark place, nobody can see his way clearly. Even if you are familiar with the terrain, you realize that you tread cautiously. So if somebody should bless you with light, and you take hold of the light, you don't let go of the light. My admonition, whatever word of prophecy has been given unto you, especially the sure word of prophecy, that all adulterated milk of the word by which we are expected to grow, by which we are expected to mature. My admonition is that we hold on to it by faith, like a light that is shining in a dark place. The reason is that we have been told in several ways that time is something God has graciously blessed all of us with. But I remember one of the speakers saying that the length of time that God has blessed each and every one of us with is not going to be the same. He explained that some of us may stay to a very old age. And sometimes, at that time, all that they can think about is loneliness, misery, suffering, pain, neglect. And I know, and I'm sure parents here can feel snippets of it. As somebody told us earlier, when we were married, so a time will come when you and your spouse will be left alone. The same children who were walking up and down in the corridors 
will no more be there. They will be fending for themselves somewhere. And once in a while, they will pass through the house. If they do. Once in a while, they may remember you. Sometimes I remember my dear mother lying in bed. And usually when he says that, I feel so bad. Why do you find me happy about Drew being a girl? She should not get to that point. She should not get to that point. Now she cannot go and come. So man is supposed to provide. So why should mommy drive her to the point that she would ask? Now, so, so you realize that no situation is permanent. If you should even go to a very well advanced stage, sometimes they even crave that they, think they are taken away. When we came here, I saw some people talking with people they knew way back. Said, so, oh, I attended a Korean with this person. I think Mrs. S said you, you met Sylvia here. She said that oh she remembers you from a Korean. And I said yes. But you realize that it will get to a point where you are alone and you cannot even find the Korean classmates. So we don't have all the time. And so if we don't put the time at our disposal to correct use, to good use. When that time comes, all oh, will have all the regrets. And I'm telling you, sometimes I ask myself, did I really handle my mother the way I should have? Did I do all that I was expected to do? And even as we prepare to leave this place, begin to ask yourself, what the relationship is like. I remember we had an interesting discussion about evangelism and we were comparing crusades to one-on-one. -on -one. This is the place of the one-on-one -on -one, where you are relating with an individual, somebody you sleep on the same bed with, somebody you, you, you stay under the same roof with, somebody who is just over your wall across your next door neighbor. Yes, we have been encouraged, we've been told that God called us for a purpose. That is the modus of random of God. He is not going to come down again to do anything. What he wanted to do, he has accomplished in Jesus. Now all he needs is a body. A body that is surrendered, a body that is given, a body that is sold out so that he can put a certain kind of life in that body. Once he was on this earth, he was limited because of his physical being. But now that he has all these beings that are seated here, if we don't even want to think about it, well, when he was here, he had 12. But if we move beyond the 12, even into this room, we have more than a hundred people over here. We have more than 120 people. We have more than 140 people. See, you. And his desire is to put a certain kind of life. And that was all the struggle we were going through since so Friday. It will be very unfair on our sides to gather such responsible, well-resourced people, well-placed people at one place and waste their time. This is important. It's an important message. That God called you for a purpose. There is something for which God laid hands on you. And that was one thing that Paul would not miss out. Because of that, he says that so that by any means I will be able to lay hold on that for which Christ laid hold on me. I will be able to reach the goal for which Christ laid hands on me. As we leave this place, 
my desire is that we will go forth as light into this world. Because the world is sinking fast. I remember when we started ministry. Listen, the reason I started singing was because I wanted space to preach. I'm telling you frankly. So the song style singing were deliberate. And one of them was, Oh friend, come to Jesus. Don't waste this precious jones. The world
Sometimes you realize that we have prayed about lots of things. God could bless you and you'll be relocated for one reason or the other. It's because of your level. You know, when, when things about you change, it places you in another bracket. It's not like you are swarming this, but the issue is that the situation is such that you may not be available. So what we have now, let's do. When you go to church, what you have now, look around. What you have, do. Let me tell you, one of the reasons why I brought Apostle Errol Amina, or we agreed to bring him, was his church. I've never fellowshiped him before. Be honest with you. All the church I've known all my life is present church. Prince of Peace for 51 years and then the rest Meridian Congregation President, that's all but my own wife my good friends they've been there before for various programs and my wife told me exactly what she told me President President Makati Joyce also said the same thing you go to his church what are they doing there that you cannot do where you find yourself? If you can sit down, analyze, you can go and have a chance. People told me it was busy, but I realized that it's not busy. Yes, it's busy, but you can make time. I went to chat with him and I'll go back again and have another chat. I want to know what makes you think. Why is this place working like this? What can we share about ministry? He's a medical doctor. So even if it is also by vocation by me. So if it's by vocation and you can do this, then you try to do something with by vocation. Let's not hear you. I heard Reverend, very Reverend, what's the table sing that? Let's not hear you idly say there is nothing I can do whilst the souls of men are dying and the master calls for you. There are people at your door waiting. The song I started with was that if you hear you want what is that song telling us? Say, yeah, if we do not finish it. Or if we do not do it. Because your time here will pass. When Kobe was leaving here and saying that we should jump, 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 I didn't attempt. I didn't attempt. At this age, I calculated the jump. Because, sorry, it doesn't mean I'm being rebellious. I needed to obey you because you are, you are in charge. You had a platform. You know, you said you should jump. I should have jumped. But, and, then, and I looked at Vido. He was also standing. I said, Vido, jump. Like, before, before.
And when they check the papers, when they look at the papers, where would I understand it? What freaks me, what makes me worry is the fact that you read that in Ecclesiastes 3, 17 or so, 17. Scripture says that God will find time for every activity under the heaven. To judge every activity, God will find time to judge every activity under heaven. Why? If you start from Ecclesiastes 1, you realize that the Bible says that there is time for everything. There's a season for everything under the seventh. There is time. He mentions the time to be born, but you know, in there, he mentions also the time to die. And because there's time for everything, the Bible also continues to say in, in Ecclesiastes 3 11 that he has made everything beautiful in its time. Effect. That is what it says. It's beautiful. And then the 17 comes the motion. I have made everything for a matter of time. Everything looks beautiful in this time. Now, this is what I'll do. I'll find time to change every activity. And I to wonder when God decides to cross examine me. And probably they are waiting in line. And they put mine there. And they are digging into it. And they are seeing the rot. And they are done with me. And they say, Nest. And it happens to be you. Or oh, even that time I'm being examined. What will be going through your mind? If there is anything we can do, we must do it now and do it fast. God's purpose for us during this time that we have here on earth is to fear Him, to be all His commandments. A life why did you for one thing? To see to know his will and to do it. Not just know his will, but do it. To love the Lord and to love our neighbor. To serve the Lord. At the end of all this time, God will find time to judge all of these areas. And you know what? It happens all the time. Those of you who are in work life, what happens? At the end of the year, I don't know how you call it. We are only, um, I'm sure the bankers and the financial institutions will say financial year. Uh, we would say academic year. Your work will be examined. They will make a judgment of your work. Some people lose their jobs. When they are praised, other people, they do good them. For the student, when the time comes, it's what examination. And they'll make a judgment. Some people get A's, some people get C's, others get F. It is a judgment of your work. These are signs for each and every one of us that one day you are going to be awarded A. Excellent. That one is only two. Excellent. Where will we be? So let us be careful how we live, making the most of every opportunity that comes our way. Every chance, don't somebody say that you don't give chance. Sometimes I, I wish I could have that same energy. Day. That energy we had when our pockets were was full of traps. We were chasing girls. We were actually chasing girls. 
you know, we went away in the, in the world, uh, yes, Uman was interesting, and that was what we were following. We came to the law, we still decided to continue chasing the others. But this time we tracked. So after church, we simply introduce ourselves, and then we walk into the house. And whilst we walk in, by the time we get home, we will have talked about the man Jesus. This time we are chasing you not because we want to have you. We are chasing you because we want Christ to have you. What are you going to do when you walk out of this place? Are you going to brighten your corner where you are? Or we are just going to let this pass? Maybe you are going to continue praying about that particular breakthrough. Jesus will appear. He would rise with healing in his wings. 